This is the Ted Walshin Podcast. Brought to you by Helenda's The Meat People. Enjoy their award-winning products at selected Metro, Sobeys, Fortino's, and Foodland locations. Helenda's, the way sausage should taste. And Tom's Place. For the finest in men's clothing at unbeatable prices, it's Tom's Place at 190 Baldwin in the heart of Kensington Market. Tom's Place will suit you. And now, here's Ted Wallachian. At the youthful age of just 14, my special guest became the youngest woman ever to win the prestigious Ford Modeling Agency Supermodel of the World competition. She has also acted in nearly 50 films, plus the television series Beverly Hills 90210 and The Bold and Beautiful. In addition, she was guest host on eTalk and ET Canada. In 1988, she authored her memoir, Monica, Between You and Me. She's a brand ambassador for Lemonwood, a volunteer ambassador for Habitat for Humanity, and a realtor with Engel and Volkers in Collingwood, Ontario, where she resides with her son and their dog. Joining me now is Monica Schneer. Nice to meet you. Thank you for taking the time to, to speak with me because you're one of the busiest people in show business, I see. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Uh, by looking back, I mean, you, you, your story is, is, is so incredible. As I mentioned at the, in the intro, at, at the age of 14, you win a competition with the, with the Elite Ford Modeling Agency, a supermodel of the world competition. For a 14-year-old, that's a pretty heavy crown to wear. <laughs> it was something, something I wasn't quite um, ready for, I don't think, but I'm very proud to represent Canada and win for the, you know, the country. And uh, it was a lot, trust me, it was a lot to take on at 14. Yeah. How did the the, the idea uh, of, of wanting to model uh, come about? Was, was there somebody that, that you saw that was modeling at the time that you thought, well, I, I really like her and I'd like to be like her? No, you know, to be honest with you, I just heard people telling my mom that I should model and because of my height and, yeah. you know, at 13, I was 5'11 wow. and I caught wind of this and I said, can I, you know, can I go to the agencies with you? And she said, no. And then I made the appointments anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, mom, I have eight appointments and they all want to see me. And I still have that piece of paper. And um, I dragged her downtown and it was, I didn't, I didn't follow any magazines or any models, but it was just something that I had heard about and that might be interesting to me. Mm -hmm. And so I followed it. She was a big supporter of yours, but wasn't necessarily, uh, couldn't wrap her head around the idea of having her little girl being a supermodel. <laughs> right. She um, she thought it was, it might be something fun to do on weekends, but then, you know, when yeah. I win um, this international competition, it was not something she expected. <laughs> And and the people at the Ford Modeling Agency wanted to sign with you, but that would have meant you living and moving to New York City, which your mother was not into that concept at all, I take it. Well, she wouldn't sign the contract, but I did actually, I so I just, I did both. I went to high school and I simultaneously was working full time. So um, she wouldn't sign the contract because it stipulated that I would have to be living in New York City for the next um, three or five years. I can't remember. So, but I still ended up, you know, having a career and mm -hmm. winning. And um, they allowed me to still enter the competition without signing. So, at, at this age, you're a teenager, you're going to Woburn Collegiate in, in Scarborough. Mm -hmm. How were you being treated by your peers? It was very strange, I think, for them and for myself. I remember walking in after the contest thinking everything would just be the same. You know, I just go to class and <laughs> the whole, I remember the entire cafeteria just stopped. Everyone like it was a, it was like a movie. Yeah. One of those, you know, teen movies like Pretty in Pink where everyone just stopped and stared at me. And I thought, oh, things are things are different. Things are going to be different here. <laughs> so yeah. I made myself scarce and I just um, fast tracked through high school and I graduated with my friends and I still moved to New York when I was 16, mm -hmm. a couple years later. And, um, but it was definitely different. I don't, I don't think people knew how to handle it. There was so much, there was so much publicity, you know, 
uh, on the cover of every magazine in Canada and in even on in New York and it was um so it was a lot for my friends to handle well, what was it like for young boys to handle? <laughs> I don't I mean, know. I was I was too busy for boys. <laughs> okay, because I mean, I, I think back when I was 14, 15, mm -hmm. and I had an interest in, in, in girls mm -hmm. and, and how difficult it was to, to approach uh, an attractive girl, never, never mind a, a, an international supermodel. Uh, it's an intimidating thing for a young boy. Um, well, let's just say I didn't get asked out a lot. You no. know, I had a sweetheart in high school, uh -huh. and um, but I didn't really date. I was just too darn busy. Yeah. So it was a lot of letter writing, snail mail. Yeah. Okay. It, when when you did the uh, the Sports Illustrated magazine, mm -hmm. how was was that a little awkward? Given it, your age at fifteen. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to say it wasn't because I didn't. I would wear. a swimsuit to the beach you know and right, it wasn't right, I don't right. feel the photographs were in any way right of course sexualizing a 14 year old but I understand that now as you know a mom yeah. <laughs> I don't have a daughter but if um if I did it, you know I understand where people take issue with that but at the time I felt the pictures were really tasteful and um but yeah, it was more. I was more sporty, you know, than sexy. <laughs> yeah, and, and today there's a whole push in in the in the modeling agency to uh, to downplay a beauty and, and you know a, a outstanding beauty and to go for more for natural looks, natural mm -hmm. sizes. I mean, look what mm -hmm. what the people at Dove Unilever, the Unilever have done mm -hmm. with, with Dove, with in their support of uh, of. Uh, of Lisa Laflamme with the gray hair situation, yeah, right? I mean, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. A, it's a totally different attitude now in, in, the, in the modeling agency. I do think there's much more diversity, um, but let's be honest, on the runway, it's still, you know, yeah. it, it, it still is very much a size uh, two, <laughs> two, four, <laughs> and they're six feet tall, these girls, but um, which is unrealistic for yeah. most people to attain but um yes i do think sports illustrated has done a wonderful job by being inclusive with different body types mm -hmm. it's it's there's really two types of modeling i mean there there are models that we see in um in newspapers and magazines that are modeling clothing and and, and jewelry and makeup and then there's the runway model that's a totally mm -hmm. different uh, a, a lifestyle totally different, yeah. different level and everything honestly ted has changed in the last couple of decades where it's much more celebrity driven, you know, yeah. Kate Blanchett, who I think is gorgeous is on the cover and Adele. And it's very celebrity driven as opposed to the era of the supermodels where Cindy and Christy and Naomi were on the cover. So it's just a very different time right now. When you look back on those days, do you, would you have changed anything? Mm. Would you approach um, it differently? Well, you know, you can't look back. So, yeah. um, yes, I turned down a lot of work. And this sounds terrible because I do believe in education. But I, I, mm. I turned down like huge jobs for, you know, for a math exam, for instance. And in the grand <laughs> scheme of things, I wish I had done those big jobs. My bank account would look way different. Yeah. And, you know, the math exam I could have made up. But I wanted to to have some semblance of a normal childhood and right. I, and finish high school. And so um, I felt this responsibility also to sort of be an example to young girls um, to, to stay in school. And, yeah. but, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't, but I, I regret turning down a few jobs. <laughs> well, but you didn't suffer financially that much for it. At the age of 16, mm -hmm. you bought your first house. <laughs> I did. I mean, uh, mind you, the prices in you know at that time were much lower. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine so. I would yeah, imagine. yeah. Uh, in Pickering, I did. Mm -hmm. And and you went to, as I mentioned, you went to Woburn Collegiate. Not only did you graduate, you graduated with honors. I did. Yes, I'm still bitter because when they sent out the checks for your, um, you got you got a check. I don't even know how much it was for, but someone had stolen it out of my. <laughs> my envelope i guess they knew that those checks were going out in uh -huh. somewhere in the post office chain but or in the mailboxes i'm not sure someone took my check but um i did i don't remember what my average was but i i was proud of that because i missed most of my classes <laughs> yeah and at, at what point you you 
you went to UCLA and you, and you studied mm -hmm. uh, t television broadcast journalism. Mm -hmm. When was that? Was that before your career in television, during uh, the career? It was much later. Um, mm -hmm. So I was modeling and then I moved at 19 to be an actor in L.A. Right. And then at the ripe age of 33, mm -hmm. I decided to go back to school because it had always pained me that I didn't go to university. Right. And there I was living in L.A. and I, I thought, well, the acting roles aren't really coming. They're not knocking down my door, you know, and I'm six. I'm over six feet tall. So it's hard to be an actor when everyone else is much, much smaller than you. Well, well, yeah, look at some of the biggest the male stars in, on, yeah. on film today. I mean, they're not even six foot at all. No, 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 I know. I could not stand next to Tom Cruise. No. <laughs> he, he would not be happy with me, but I... Um, well, apparently after a yeah. while, neither could Nicole Kid Kidman. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was happy to put her heels back on. Yeah. But yeah. Um, at 33, I went to UCLA. I was the happiest, mature student you've ever seen. I was... Just and then I walked in and there were two other models there that I knew. Wow. Well, that were famous. And Rashamba Williams was a Sports Illustrated model, and she was in my class. And um, Madison Michelle was a VH1, uh, I believe, um, host and model. Um, and there I was, the three of us, and we had the best time. You, you but you you did a lot of work in film. You did almost fifty films in in total. Mm -hmm. You were in television mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, Beverly Hills uh, nine hundred two one zero, which was groundbreaking television at, at for at, at that time. Yes, uh, and was. and how many years were you on that program? I was only on nine hundred two one zero for um, three episodes, but it was groundbreaking because I played a trans woman, and mm -hmm. at the time, you know, trans people were not depicted really in television and and I do regret that now because now I understand that it should have gone to a trans actor right it it should have it, you know we we when you when you know better you do better and um but yeah. at the time it was groundbreaking I was proud of the episode and and um yeah I was but on um, Beverly Hills 90210 just three times and then Bold and the Beautiful for three years yeah and how was that experience? You know, at Bold and the Beautiful, people make fun of soap actors because it, it's over the top and it's campy. But it was great training because you have sometimes, you know, 20 pages a day or 40 yeah. pages if you have a heavy storyline. And that's great training to show up. You show up at 6 a.m., you do your blocking, you wait in your room, and you go out and you have to nail it because they have to get an entire episode in the can every day. Mm -hmm. So it was great training, I thought. And from what I've read and what I understand, that there are no uh, actors th th whose, whose fans are more committed to them than mm -hmm. soap operas. Soap <laughs> yes, actors, sometimes right? it's, yeah, sometimes it's a little uncomfortable, especially if you have a... <laughs> I my character was not well liked, so uh -huh. Ivana was you know a bit of a hussy, and um, <laughs> yes, um, so uh, she was That's not well word. liked. <laughs> she was so at the grocery store, I would be accosted by these people that loved their you know their soap opera and they hated my character, and I had to gently explain that it you know I have nothing to do with the the writing or the character. Oh, it's gosh. just a, a job. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it doesn't, must have made you shake your head and think, how come these people think that I'm really that person when I'm, when I'm clearly not? Clearly. Yeah. Because, and well, you were also in, in, in a video game, right? You played. Uh, I did in, in Command Oks and Conquer. Yeah. Uh, Oksana Christos? Yes. What kind and of character? I, you know what? Honest to goodness, it was so long ago. I think I was a bit evil, but I. It has a huge following. I had no idea doing that when I when they flew me to Vegas and I and I did this, you know, on a green screen. What it would become, and I still get emails about that character. She was, I guess, quite quite evil. Mm -hmm. now, but I can't you, quite remember how she was because it was maybe twenty years ago. Now you have a son, Bodhi, who's what nine mm -hmm. years old. He's nine. He He's started nine. school today. Oh, well, good for him. So mm -hmm. he obviously is, is into video games. Does he know that mom was once a, a voice of a video character? He does not. And it wasn't just voice. It was also action. Oh, okay. Um, um, uh, he does not. 
I don't share too much with him. <laughs> he just knows that people recognize me. And he, when he was little, he would say, Mom, why do people know your name? <laughs> and it's kind of hard to explain when, you know, they're four or five. But um, no, right. he hasn't seen the uh, Command and Conquer. And he doesn't play a lot of video games except for um, he has Roblox and uh, Minecraft. Ted Walshin returns in a moment. Okay, once again, it's time to drop down to our favorite location in the heart of Kensington Market. That, of course, would be Tom's place, and there we find the proprietor, Tom Mahalik. And a lot of people heading back to work, I can see it on the the roads and the streets and the buses and the public transit. And that means that people are looking for clothing. Not everybody wears a suit to work. Not everybody wears a tie. But people's weights have altered over this COVID period. And now they just find themselves looking for something that fits better and maybe something that's just a little bit more contemporary. Teddy, you said it so beautifully. You're, you, you really are right on the money. Ted, it's very difficult to, to argue with you. You know, the days of ties and shirts are gone. You actually have to also put out a pair of pants. And people, when they're putting their pants on, they realize, wow, we have gained weight. <laughs> but that's not an issue. That's not a problem. You come down to Tom's Space and we'll hook you up. And people are looking and shopping for comfortable clothing, clothing that makes sense, and clothing that they need to go to work. And there's no better place than Tom's Place. We have wonderful sweaters for you. Yeah. We have great shirts and great merchandise. And I mentioned that to a friend the other day. I said, you should drop by to Tom's Place. He said, I don't need a suit. I said, I'm not talking about suits. But how about a nice shirt? How about a nice sweater? How about a nice coat? How about, you know, how about a nice scarf? All kinds of different clothing. And the prices, well, really, you, you can't beat it. The service is outstanding. The staff has been there for so long, as has Tom's Place. And there's reasons for that. It's because it's a great place to shop. Tom's Place, 190 Baldwin in the heart of Kensington Market. Thank you, Ted. Have you been tasked with the role of a state executor or expected maybe in the future you will be? Well, if so, let me make your life a lot simpler by introducing you to my friend Debbie Stanley. Debbie is the founder of ETP Canada. They specialize in estate administration. Their goal simply is to help Canadian executors understand their role and how to deal with a loved one's estate. Let's face it, there's no school for this. But ETP Canada offers services such as executor support, estate accounting, and they have a new online course called Executor Ready. It's an engaging video designed to make estate administration easier and affordable. And those are two comforting thoughts during a stressful time. So call Debbie Stanley at one 866 309-0387. That's 1-866-309-0387. Or you can get her at info at etpcanada.ca. That's info at etpcanada.ca. Now back to Ted Wallachan. Uh, Monica Christianer is, is my is my guest. You wrote a memoir mm. titled Monica Between You and Me at a at a young age. Like you were mm. like what in your in your teens in your late teens? It was for um, young aspiring models. I was sixteen. Yeah. No, okay. But to be frank, you know, I was afraid to tell the the whole truth because I didn't want to bite the hand that fed me, you know. Of but I I am writing a, a tell all now. I'm not so afraid. Ah. <laughs> um, and you know what? Like like anyone in that industry, it, there were there were good times and there were some really tough times. And I I wanted to be more honest in this one that I'm writing right now. And you're not worried about saying anything that would hurt no, anybody's feelings. No, because I'm not. <laughs> I'm no, because I'm not really modeling anymore. And the truth is the truth. And you know, you have to um, be honest with people and yourself, right? Yeah. Now, do you miss modeling? You know what? To be frank, I do. I I miss being on set, and same with acting. I don't miss all the stuff leading up to that like getting the job for acting it's terrible it's a lot of auditioning and a lot of rejection and Mm -hmm. you spend the whole day and night learning your lines and sometimes they don't even watch your because they have an offer out to some celebrity you know it's I don't but being on set on a modeling shoot or on an acting job I love just getting like being there Mm -hmm. and creating beautiful pictures or a character but I, I do miss it quite a bit why don't you pursue it you could still do it. I mean, you, you yeah. still have, you're still a beautiful woman. Oh, thank you. You know, I, um, 
you have to be honest with yourself, like I said, and I wasn't getting the roles and um, the jobs I need to sustain myself and to to have a healthy sort of income. Um, and I've always loved real estate. So that's why I made a shift in careers recently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you're the brand ambassador for Lemonwood, which to me mm -hmm. sounds like a, quite, a, quite a fascinating company. Tell me about that in the history of Lemonwood. Yeah, so just when I'm about to leave modeling, <laughs> Lemonwood <laughs> approaches me. And I love the company. It's a female-owned business. Um, predominantly, uh, um, the employees are female. They have ethically sourced um, beautiful cashmeres and linens from around the world. And Christine Peters, who started the company, is very careful about the products she brings in and makes sure that everyone who is manufacturing them is treated and paid very well. Mm -hmm. So I loved the story and they asked me to be a brand ambassador and I said yes. And um, they have six locations and uh, I'm very um, happy to be working with them. Just when I tell you that I'm not modeling anymore, then you, <laughs> I, I, did, I did take on that job. Yeah. Okay. And, and now let's talk about Monica, the builder, because yeah. you're one of those people um, that they used to refer to as handymen because mm -hmm. you, you're, you're good with tools. You, mm -hmm. you, you, you built like um, everything from a, uh, from a, a tree fort for your son, mm -hmm. Louis, mm -hmm. to like the interior and exterior and exterior and in and an interior kitchen at your house in Collingwood. Yeah. yeah. Where, where did you learn this? So, Years ago, I was dating someone and we were flipping homes in Vancouver. Uh -huh. And I learned, we both just learned the, the trades, uh, self-taught. Uh -huh. And um, he went on to be a really big builder in Vancouver. But I just learned, I always loved the process. And so I've been flipping homes since for years um, as a way to make uh, money and um, and so when I moved to Collingwood I did my house and um, you know renovated the whole house by myself and it was a pandemic so I built a tree house which was not easy by the way by yourself because it's quite up there in height in height it's not so easy it would have been helpful to have someone there but anyway we were quarantining and um but yeah, I just love it all the entire process of building and you feel, you know, a sense of accomplishment. And I love inspiring women to pick up tools and try things for themselves. And so how did, how did the, the, the situation present itself in real estate? Mm. So I had always thought about getting my license and I was married to a real estate agent. And I, I just, I just thought, well, now's the perfect time during the pandemic to to study to go back to school to get my mm -hmm. license i was approached by a german company called engel and volker and um and max hahn with engel and volker said to me have you ever thought about it and i said yes i've thought about it many many times and he said just do it you won't regret it and so i got my license um recently and i haven't looked back i love i love the whole process of like helping people find a home, sell their home. And, and, and are you focused in that Collingwood Blue Mountain area? I am, but I also go every, I'm, every week I'm in Toronto. So I also have a few clients, uh, buyer clients looking in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And you're living in Collingwood. I do, but my family is, my mom and dad are still in Toronto, Scarborough. Uh -huh. Yeah, and and it's a, it's 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 a beautiful part of the province, Collingwood. I mean, that whole area is is, is quite stunning. Mm -hmm. for, really, for all four seasons are are, yeah. are quite beautiful, and it's very mm -hmm. relaxing. And it's Toronto is a very exciting, dynamic, cosmopolitan city, but it can make you crazy sometimes because it's so yeah. damn busy. It is so well, especially if you've lived up north like I have for so many years. When I drive to Toronto now, I I'm like an old lady behind the, the steering wheel. <laughs> People are honking at me because I'm not going fast enough. Yeah. It's a much more fast-paced uh, lifestyle. You, you you talked about the, one of the reasons why you wanted to, to make that change is because mm -hmm. when you're a model, you so much of it is out of your control. Mm -hmm. The amount of time mm -hmm. you have to spend, where you have to go, when you have to go, mm -hmm. and and in real estate now, you can dictate your life from yeah. here on in really. Yeah, that's really the main draw for me is that with acting, it's out of my control or modeling. You know, I've been relying on people to give me a job 
my entire 35 years, my, my entire 35 year career. So now I can, the harder you work, the, you know, the more successful you are. And it's completely in my control, which is nice. Yeah. Except and for the housing crash, which is not crash, but correction that's happening right now. Well, and you know what? I mean, it's, it's funny we, we, we mentioned that because when people mm -hmm. listen, because these the podcasts are all evergreen. I mean, people could be mm -hmm. listening to this a year from now and the market right, could be right. totally different. But it's just, mm -hmm. it's, it's like you see the market coming down because the interest rates are going up. Inflation is out of control. And yet now I'm reading just, just a few days ago that prices in some parts of the province are starting to climb up again. Yes, it's so it's really interesting what's going to happen. I mean, in Collingwood, we, you know, uh, 20, we had a we had a 14 year trajectory of prices going up. Mm -hmm. And then now we and then in 2021, things went bananas in Collingwood because people were leaving Toronto and they were coming up north to have a more like rural life. Right. Yeah. And now but we're back to 2019 prices, which are not terrible. But, mm -hmm. he, you know, you have to educate your seller and mitigate their expectations because they, they missed out the, on that 2021 curve where things right. went nuts and they were having multiple offers. You know? Right. Now, just for, for people who are listening mm -hmm. to this, who are mm -hmm. not in Toronto or Ontario yeah. or, or even in this country, just mm -hmm. to give them an idea, sure. the, the price of an average home in Collingwood is what, about $900,000? So the average price, I think, um, the median price is about seven to eight hundred thousand. Yes, right. and because um, somebody you know, listening in Cleveland right now just had a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> well, they would have a real heart attack if they knew that five years ago, when when I was moving here, uh, well, let's say seven years ago, houses were two hundred thousand dollars. Wow. You know? Yeah, <laughs> and I missed that. I missed that those prices. I came a, a little bit later. And they were about four hundred thousand, and the median price now is about seven to eight hundred thousand. Yeah, but Which, it's it, it's mm -hmm, a great it's place for bad. yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, and Collingwood is, is is a great place to grow up. It, you're a very active person. You you like to mm -hmm. cross country ski. You hike. You your mm -hmm. son and your and your dog, right? Yeah. And so and for them, it's it's a great great place to go for to 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 grow up and mm -hmm. and to stay active and for you to stay active as well. And you're with your son, who you have said publicly is your best friend. Yeah, he's my buddy. Yeah, it's a really beautiful lifestyle. You know, we can be outside. Like you said, four seasons, there's always something to do. Kayaking. Yeah. Um, people come up here not just for skiing, but mountain biking. And there's really something for, and windsurfing is, kite surfing is a huge uh, sport here. So really, there's a sport for everyone. And Bodhi and I really take advantage of the outdoor life here. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend if if someone came to you and said, "My daughter's fourteen years of age and she's tall and she's pretty like you were mm -hmm. at that age, <laughs> and she wants to be a model?" Would, would you say I, do it? Yeah. You know what? I would if it came from her because you know I I'm really grateful that my mom didn't hold me back because I really would have I think I would have missed that opportunity to yeah. be in the contest and it it affected my entire life that contest and. If it's something that she or he wants to do at 14 and it's it's driven by their desire, I think it's totally fine. Yeah. And the great thing about your life right now is, is that you're involved in a lot of different things. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you've got you've got your son, you've got your life in real estate. Mm -hmm. um, you're, you've done a lot of work with uh, the Habitat for Humanity, which I understand you're going back to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and and you're also you also do some work on on one of Toronto radio stations AM seven forty on a weekly basis. Do you not? <laughs> I'm on um, at the moment on on Zoomer yeah. for Lemonwood. We do um, Lemonwood style sessions. Yes. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's good. Um, it's, it's yeah. I it's, do a little bit of everything. <laughs> well, it, isn't isn't that the best way to sample life though? Yeah, I'm lucky because I have lots of different um, facets to my life that make it interesting. I don't get I don't think I could ever have a regular job because of my history. And yeah. so I get every day I love waking up without yeah. knowing how, what the day holds, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and especially with real with real estate, you get a call and someone wants to see the house, you go. And yeah. um, so it's exciting. 
Exactly. It's good stuff. Listen, I thank you very much for taking the time to chat with yeah. us. It's been, it's, it's been, you've lived a quite, quite a fascinating life and you're still a young woman and I'm sure that there's a lot more fascinating chapters ahead of you and I wish you all the best. Thank you so much for having me on. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. The Ted Wallace and Podcast has been brought to you by Helenda's The Meat People. Enjoy their award-winning products at Selected Metro, Sobeys, Fortino's, and Foodland locations. Helenda's, the way sausage should taste. And Tom's Place, for the finest in men's clothing at unbeatable prices, it's Tom's Place at 190 Baldwin in the heart of Kensington Market. Tom's Place will suit you. The Ted Wallachian Podcast is produced by Joey Roselli. Technical production by Paul Gatt. Music by Bike Thieves. I'm Becky Coles. Submit your questions and comments to ted at twmedia.ca.